And so one question I've been dying to ask you is, when did real estate become your thing? I, I, I've heard your videos, I've heard your story before, but it, it never really clicked for me where you're like, you know what? Buy and hold rentals or being an investor is, is the way I want to go. Yeah, it was probably back at, when I was in high school, my uh, girlfriend at the time, I was living with her and her parents, uh, decided, oh, she was going to get a real estate license. And, and that's because her father was just getting ready to retire from real estate. Uh, and I thought, real estate license, uh, I, I don't know, that's not my thing. I want to go corporate. I want to do corporate world. Well, after she had been doing it, and every time I'd pass her studying, I'd realize, like, that seems pretty easy. And I'm hearing these scenarios or whatever. I'm like, I'll check that out. You know, what else? I'm doing high school stuff. Why not? And, and so that's actually where I first got excited about real estate. And when I started hearing the stories of all of these clients that my father-in-law, now father-in-law had of people who started with houses and, and are now living financially free thanks to their rental income by buying one rental at a time, I'm like, huh, that seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> Wow, I, I didn't. I, I don't know if you've shared that story before. If so, I, I it's one of the videos I missed. Um, I, a, it's got to be interesting living with your girlfriend in high school with her parents. I'm sure that was interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was mostly because had I see they were they were pretty smart in that. I was living in Florida at the time and they realized, uh-oh, Laura and my wife now might move out to Florida. And they're oh, like, well, how can wow. we prevent Lauren from leaving? Let's just invite Kevin here. <laughs> I got it. Well, good for them. They had, they had foresight in planning and clearly liked you. They wanted to keep you around. So uh, that's awesome. And then your father-in-law, through his stories and his relationships, give you that kind of introduction, right? They say, hey, you know, client A, client B, client C. And you start hearing these stories as a teenager um, I can only imagine kind of how that launched you going forward, right? It's, it's yeah, and at the time, it was just the start of the recession, too. You know, I really got started getting interested in this uh, around the beginning of 2009. So that's, you know, right as home values are plummeting and, and sort of starting to bottom out at the end of 2009, 2010, we're starting to see this bottoming out. And, and we, we're running numbers, and we're practicing these scenarios are of, okay, well, what if you bought a house for 20% down, and then you went over here, and you bought borrowed the 20% from Bob and you paid interest on both of those loans and then you turned around and rented it out and then you have a positive cash flow. That's how the numbers lined up back then. I'm like, this really is a no-brainer. Obviously, the numbers aren't as beautiful anymore today, but yeah. it certainly got me started. Well, that you know, kudos to you for taking that shot because you know I invested pre-crash and after. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people had the opportunity in 09. I mean, because the deals were everywhere. I mean, literally in the MLS, right? Capital letters, any offer accepted. Exactly. <laughs> so what do you think, how do you think you had the, I mean, you were a teenager or at least early 20s, you had the guts to pull the trigger because you've always been in California investor, right? So these are hundreds of thousands of dollars you're, you're looking at buying. Yeah, I mean, I, I was working at Jamba Juice and I had, uh, you know, maybe six or $7,000 to my name. And the first place I bought was $300,000. And I bought that with my wife, Lauren, and it was a fixer at that. Uh, and I, I think really what got me to pull the trigger was not only those stories and the beliefs and seeing other people succeed, but also, uh, well, twofold. One, I knew that worst case, if something went wrong, we could always rent the house out and we felt like we were getting a good deal to where we were hoping we could sell it if we needed to. That was a safety net. But if all that failed, the second thing that I always have in the back of my mind is, hey, well, if everything doesn't work out, I could always go file bankruptcy and I guess I'll just, you know, start over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. you're, you're in your early 20s or late teens and you're like, oh, if that's the worst case scenario, take your shot, right? Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to go to jail. What do I got to lose? I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> so let's remind everybody about that $300,000 house. It was in what city, kind of the single story, 1,300 square foot. What, what was it? Yeah, three and two, 1,333 square feet. It was a place that I actually bought uh, with 3.5% down using an FHA loan. Uh, we did the renovation loan portion of that, uh, the 203K, and renovated it uh, within a year of having bought it and fixed it up. Maybe we were into the deal with fix up and everything for somewhere around 380. Within a year, the place was worth like 475. And we're like, wow. <laughs> you know, here I was working my butt off at Jamba Juice for a year, and I was, I managed to collect $6,000 and a beach cruiser bike that I spent. <laughs> you know, and, and then you, you realize what real estate can do for you. And it's like, whoa, 
that's way faster. <laughs> you know, people are always like, oh, meet Kevin. Yeah, he's that buy and hold long-term appreciation guy. And I'm like, well, that's certainly not how I started at least. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, some is good, more is better, right? I mean, that's yeah. That but again, there's nothing about your story that anybody watching, you had an FHA loan, three and a half percent down. You did yeah. a 203K for the repair money. Yeah. Those are available today, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And again, Jamba Juice, right? So, you know, sounds like, you know, well, unemployment's under 4%. So, you know, most people have jobs. Um, and again, so where do you go from there, right? So you have your first one. It's owner occupied, obviously, at this point. Where, where do you, where's the second one coming? What's the distance between those? Yeah, so the second one, the first one we closed uh, at the end of 2012. It ended up being a six-month escrow. It was a nightmare with Bank of America at the time. They didn't have the best of reputation for defending loans. They had just absorbed countrywide. I remember. That work. <laughs> I remember. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, after that, we ended up, uh, it was the beginning of 2013, uh, this was before we had sort of, uh, uh, you know, started looking into the, the new value of our property and things like that. But we already had a good feeling. Our renovations were done. We're like, this is this is pretty cool. We feel pretty comfortable with this. This is not as hard as we thought it was. Uh, and at the beginning of 2013, I was a brand new real estate agent as well. Well, I would say brand new. Beginning of 2013, I've been doing it now for two years as a real estate agent. So it's the beginning of my th uh, third year now as a real estate agent at 13. And I'm passing out flyers. It feels brand new because I feel like I'm doing it forever now. <laughs> I, I remember passing out flyers in a neighborhood. And I, I kept telling myself, I'm going to find one. I'm going to find one. And I wasn't actually telling myself I'm going to find a seller or a buyer, although I really wanted to find a seller or a buyer. And that's why I was passing out flyers. I kept telling myself, I'm going to find a deal I can buy this year. And it was so weird because how that actually ended up happening was I, two months later, it was maybe the beginning of March, I'm doing an open house and this person walks into the open house and says, hey, would it be weird? And it wasn't even my listing. I was holding an open house on. Somebody else's uh, let me hold an open house. Anyway, somebody walks in and says, hey, would it be weird for there to be two for sale signs up on the same street at the same time? And I'm like, huh, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> you know, tell me more. <laughs> Yeah, and so long story short, that ended up being a place we were able to buy off market uh, for three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. After we did a little bit of work to it, it was probably worth about five. I think we spent maybe forty k on fixing it up, and uh, here we go. There was our first rental property, <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa, cool!" So it's just weird how like it, I just kept telling myself every day, "I'm gonna make it happen," and then sure enough, like the opportunities present themselves. Yeah. So again, let's, let's remind folks. So first one was 09. Second one was 2013. My math says four years. That's okay. Right. You don't have to do 17 in a year, right? Like we see some of these social media pages and, you know, people on Facebook going, Oh, I do 30, you know, three deals a month. And it doesn't have to be that way. Right. No, it, it doesn't have to be fast at all. And I may have misconveyed. I started my real estate career in 09. We didn't buy that place until the end of 11. And oh, okay until late 12. Oh, okay. So it was actually 12. We ended up closing this deal, which is just crazy how, how like it right along the lines of what you're saying, how long it can sometimes take to like, okay, now, now I'm getting my real estate license. Now I get licensed in 2010. Now I'm excited about real estate. Okay. Now I want to pull the trigger. How am I going to do it? And so you're so right. Like it's okay to, to take your time. And it, for my goal was always one at a time. And if I could do it one a year, Right. That's awesome. You know, it doesn't, it, you see a lot of stories online where people are like, hey, look, you know, I was able to do 10 deals this month and I'm, you know, making this much drop shipping and I'm putting it all into real estate and I just bought five places in Indianapolis. To me, it's not a realistic way to build wealth. To me, it's, yeah. you know, buy a place, live it, feel it for six months to a year. You know, the time between we closed our first and our second was about 12 months. Okay. And, and, and to me, even that felt kind of fast, right? Yeah. 